Hey there, I'm Brielle Anderson. I'm a 35-year-old middle school teacher with a story that might just make your jaw drop. Before I dive in, why don't you hit that like button and subscribe? Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming. I'm standing in the kitchen of my modest two-bedroom house, the one I'd poured my heart and savings into with my ex-husband, Tom. It wasn't much, but it was ours. Or so I thought. I can't believe we're still living in this dump. Tom, we talked about this. We're building our future, remember? He scoffed. Future? What future? We're stuck in a rut, Brielle. Look at Marcus. He's living the high life while we're scraping by. We're doing just fine, I argued, feeling the familiar tension building. Fine? You call teaching snot-nosed brats for peanuts fine? Tom sneered. I felt my cheeks burn. Those brats are my students, and I love my job. Yeah, well, your job isn't going to get us out of this shoebox, he snapped. Just then, my phone buzzed. It was my sister, Zoe. Hey, sis, everything okay? Zoe's voice was concerned. Yeah, just... The usual. Tom being a jerk again? You know you don't have to put up with that, right? I glanced back at Tom, who was now furiously typing on his phone. I know, I just... I thought things would get better. Later that week, I was having coffee with my best friend and fellow teacher, Elena, when she dropped a bombshell. Bree, I saw Tom having lunch with Marcus yesterday. They were talking about... Selling the house. What? That's impossible. He wouldn't... But he would. And he did. That night, Tom came home with a smug look on his face. I've got news, babe. I'm selling my half of the house. You're what? I felt like the floor was dropping out from under me. It's time I moved on to bigger and better things, he said, not even looking at me. You can buy me out if you want, but we both know you can't afford it on your teacher's salary. I stood there, speechless, as he walked past me to pack his things. The next day at school, I was a wreck. Jack, our principal, noticed immediately. Brielle, is everything all right? he asked, his voice laced with genuine concern. I couldn't hold it in anymore. The tears started flowing as I told him everything. I'm so sorry, Jack said, handing me a tissue. If there's anything I can do to help. I shook my head, trying to compose myself. Thanks, Jack. I just... I don't know how I'm going to keep the house now. As I walked back to my classroom, I overheard two students whispering. Did you hear? Miss Anderson's husband left her. My mom says they're getting divorced. Great. Now even my students knew. Six months after the divorce, I was drowning in bills. My kitchen table had become a sea of overdue notices and budget spreadsheets. I'd taken on so many extra tutoring gigs that I barely had time to breathe. Another late night? Elena asked as she poked her head into my classroom. I nodded, rubbing my eyes. Third this week, but these math tests won't grade themselves. You can't keep this up, Bree. You're gonna burn out. Just then, my phone buzzed. It was Zoe. Hey, sis, I've got an idea. Why don't you start an online tutoring thing? You're already doing it anyway. Might as well make it official. I laughed tiredly. Right, because I have so much free time. I'm serious. You're amazing at breaking down complex stuff. People would pay for that. After we hung up, I couldn't shake the idea. Maybe Zoe was on to something. The next day, I approached Jack in the teacher's lounge. An online education platform? That's brilliant, Brielle, he exclaimed. What are you calling it? Bright Minds, I said, surprised by my own certainty. I'm thinking of starting with math and science courses. Jack's eyes lit up. I could promote it through our school network, give it some credibility right off the bat. I felt a glimmer of hope for the first time in months. Weeks passed, and Bright Minds was slowly gaining traction. Elena had become my unofficial assistant, helping me manage the growing workload. Look at this, Bree, she squealed one afternoon, pointing at my laptop. You've got students signing up from three different states. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Technical glitches, negative reviews, and my own self-doubt were constant companions. One evening, as I was leaving the grocery store, I ran into Marcus. Well, well, 
If it isn't the teacher turned, what exactly? He smirked. I straightened my spine. I'm running an online education platform. Marcus laughed. Oh, honey, leave the business to the big boys. Stick to what you know. Finger painting and ABCs. As he walked away, I overheard him on the phone. Yeah, Tom, you won't believe who I just saw. Your ex is trying to play entrepreneur. It's pathetic. I felt my cheeks burn with anger and embarrassment. But something else was bubbling up, too. Determination. That night, I threw myself into improving Bright Minds. I redesigned courses, reached out to other teachers for collaborations, and spent hours perfecting my teaching modules. Weeks turned into months, and Bright Minds was growing steadily. Then, out of the blue, I received an email that made my heart skip a beat. Miss Anderson, we represent EduTech Innovations. We've been following Bright Minds' progress and are interested in discussing a potential partnership. I read the email to Zoe over the phone, my voice shaking. Holy smokes, Bree, this is huge. But what if I'm in over my head? What if they realize I'm just a middle school teacher playing pretend? Zoe's voice softened. Hey, stop that. You're not playing anything. You built this from scratch while juggling a full-time job. You're the real deal, sis. The next day, I sat across from two suit-clad executives, trying to look more confident than I felt. So, Miss Anderson, talk us through your vision for Bright Minds, one of them said, leaning forward. I took a deep breath. This was my moment. As I began to speak, I felt something shift inside me. Maybe, just maybe, I was onto something big here, and no one, not Tom, not Marcus, not even my own doubts, was going to stand in my way. Two years flew by in a whirlwind of success. Bright minds had exploded, and suddenly I found myself in board meetings instead of classrooms. My bank account had more zeros than I'd ever imagined possible. Miss Anderson, your net worth has officially crossed into seven figures, my financial advisor announced one day. I nearly choked on my coffee. I'm sorry, did you say seven figures? She nodded, smiling. Congratulations, Brielle. You're a millionaire. First thing I did, bought out Tom's half of our old house. The realtor looked at me funny when I insisted on keeping it. You could afford a mansion now, Miss Anderson, she said. I just smiled. This place has history, but it could use some updates. I threw myself into renovations, careful not to change the house's character. New kitchen, expanded home office, but the same cozy feel. Elena visited once it was done. Bree, this is gorgeous, but why aren't you shouting your success from the rooftops? I shrugged. I'm still me, Elle, just with a better savings account. Instead of splurging, I started a scholarship program for kids who reminded me of my younger self. Watching their faces light up when they realized college was possible? That was worth more than any luxury car. Then, like a bad penny, Tom showed up in town. I heard through the grapevine that he'd blown through his money on some half-baked schemes. Word was, he'd come crawling back to Marcus. I ran into Marcus at the grocery store. He looked... deflated. Hey Marcus, everything okay? I asked, genuinely concerned. He sighed. Mark, it's been rough. And now Tom's back looking for handouts. As if I'm not stretched thin already. I felt a twinge of sympathy, but before I could respond, my phone buzzed. Another meeting about expanding Bright Minds into Europe. A week later, I was weeding my front garden when a familiar voice made me freeze. Well, well, still playing in the dirt, I see. I looked up. Tom stood there, trying to look casual, but I could see the desperation in his eyes. Tom, this is... unexpected. I've been doing some thinking, Bree. I messed up. Big time. I never should have left. I raised an eyebrow. Oh? Yeah, I... I miss us. Miss this place. He gestured at the house. Though looks like you haven't changed much. Still living the simple life, huh? I bit back a smile. If only he knew. It's what I can afford on a teacher's salary, I said neutrally. Tom nodded, a glint in his eye. Right, right. Hey, why don't we grab dinner? For old time's sake, I could tell you about some business opportunities I've been looking into. I nearly laughed out loud. Same old Tom, 
always looking for an angle. I appreciate the offer, Tom, but I'm pretty busy these days. Lots of papers to grade, you know how it is. He looked around, clearly trying to find a way to extend the conversation. Come on, Bree. Don't tell me you're still mad about the house thing. Water under the bridge, right? We were good together once. I took a deep breath. Tom, I... Just then my phone rang. The bright mind's ringtone. Sorry, I have to take this. It was... interesting. Seeing you, Tom. As I turned to go inside, I caught a glimpse of his face. Confusion, frustration, and a hint of the old arrogance. He thought he had me figured out. Little did he know, I wasn't the same Brielle he'd left behind, and I had no intention of letting him back into my life. But for now, let him think I was still struggling. Something told me this wasn't the last I'd see of Tom. Over the next few weeks, Tom turned up everywhere. The grocery store, my favorite coffee shop, even outside the school. Rumors started flying about our rekindled romance. I called an emergency meeting with Zoe and Elena. He's like a bad rash that won't go away, I groaned. Zoe's eyes gleamed. I've got an idea. Let's give him exactly what he wants, and then some. We hatched a plan. I'd invite Tom to the upcoming charity gala for my scholarship program, letting him think he'd won me over. The night of the gala arrived. Tom showed up in a rented tux, oozing fake charm. You look stunning, Bree, he whispered, kissing my cheek. I smiled tightly. Thanks. Let's find our seats. As dinner wound down, Jack took the stage. And now it's my honor to introduce our keynote speaker and the founder of Bright Minds, Brielle Anderson. Tom's jaw dropped as I walked to the podium. I delivered my speech, announcing a major expansion of the scholarship program. When I returned to our table, Tom was fuming. What the hell, Brie? Why didn't you tell me? Before I could respond, Marcus appeared, looking desperate. Tom, buddy. I heard you were back in town. Listen, I've got this amazing investment opportunity. Tom brushed him off. Not now, Marcus. Can't you see I'm with my girlfriend? I stood up. Actually, Tom, I'm not your girlfriend. I never was, not since you walked out on me two years ago. The room fell silent. But... But I supported you. I always believed in you. Tom sputtered. Marcus snorted. That's rich. You told me her business was pathetic just last week. I turned to Tom, my voice steady. It's over, Tom. It has been for a long time. Please leave. Standing in my renovated home that night, I smiled. The journey hadn't been easy, but I wouldn't change a thing. Bright Minds was going global and I was ready for whatever came next. My past with Tom? Just a distant memory. A reminder of how far I'd come. The story of Brielle and Tom has come to an end. Now I've got a question for you. If you were in Brielle's shoes at that charity gala, would you have publicly exposed Tom's true intentions, or would you have handled it privately to avoid the drama? What do you think is the right way to deal with someone who tries to take advantage of your success? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspective might help someone facing a similar situation. If you enjoyed this story of resilience and sweet justice, don't forget to hit that like button. And hey, why not subscribe for more compelling stories that'll keep you on the edge of your seat? Your support means the world to us. Thanks for watching.